What's the best high definition camera you can get for your FPV quad? Is it a GoPro? Yes, it's, it's a GoPro. What are you talking about? Of course it's a GoPro. Uh, how much are GoPros? Okay, so GoPros aren't for everybody. So the real question that a lot of FPV pilots find themselves asking is not what's the best camera, it's what's the best camera that I can actually afford? And that brings us to today's product, the Runcam 5 Orange. So I guess the question we got to answer today is, is the Runcam 5 Orange worth spending 100 bucks on? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The first thing I want to do is just show you some flight video from the camera. And I want you to know that I am going to be exporting this video in 2.7K or 1440 resolution. If you're watching this on YouTube, you absolutely should go down to this gear and make sure you are watching in 1440 resolution. Because the truth is, guys, YouTube is going to mangle this footage. You are not going to see the best that this camera is capable of putting out. You're going to see what you would see if you uploaded footage to YouTube and other people watched it. So that's valuable. But the best way to watch FPV footage on YouTube is to upload in 2.7K, in my experience, and for you to watch in that 1440 resolution. Wouldn't it be even better if you uploaded in 4K? No. In my experience, YouTube doesn't give enough bandwidth to the 4K resolution. You get more resolution, but it actually looks worse. And that's why I'm uploading in 2.7K. One more thing. I'm only going to show you the settings that I actually change between each clip. So everything you see here is exactly how the camera was set up for every single clip. The only things I changed were the resolution, the color style, I switched between normal and flat color, and turning distortion correction and image stabilization on and off. And the reason I didn't tweak the other settings is because I feel like this is just obviously how you're gonna fly most of the time. Locking ISO to 100 will increase motion blur. That is almost always what you want when you're flying, unless you're flying in a very, very dark environment, which I wasn't. By the way, kudos to Runcam for making it possible to lock ISO sensitivity. You couldn't do that on their earlier cameras, and this is, to me, a major, major tool to get better, uh, better video without having to use an, well, the truth is you still have to use an ND filter if you want the best, but this is at least something. Shutter speed on auto. If you lock the shutter speed and you're flying, you'll almost always end up with some part of the video over or underexposed. It would be cool to be able to lock the shutter speed, uh, but that just doesn't work for FPV flying in my experience. And volume, you always want the volume set for FPV, otherwise the wind noise is just horrendous. So the only things I'll be changing are resolution, color style, distortion correction, and image stabilization on and off. And we're going to start with this 1080-60 footage. I think 1080-60 is just a very good generic resolution. A lot of people are going to be working in 1080-60. No color correction, normal color, no distortion correction, no image stabilization, just sort of vanilla. I'm going to let you form your own opinion. I'm not going to talk about it too much. Next, we're going to take a look at the flat color profile. Uh, this is something that I have begged for from Runcam in the past, and it is one of the features that really gives GoPro an edge. The flat color profile records in a desaturated, low contrast mode that is not intended to be viewed. It is intended to give more flexibility when doing color grading after the fact. There's no question here that this flat color profile is not as desaturated and flat as GoPro's ProTune flat. In fact, frankly, some people might even just prefer this as a finished product to the higher contrast uh, default settings. Nevertheless, it's very, very cool that Runcam is hearing these requests and is offering this feature, um, uh, perhaps with a little bit more tweaking in the image settings, turning the saturation down a bit, you could actually get something that gave as much latitude in post as GoPro's Pro Tune Flat. Next, we're going to look at 2.7K60. I'm going to leave the color in flat because I kind of thought that looked a little better than the really super contrasty default setting. And distortion correction is on here. Wow. 
Just to give you a better perspective on what the video looks like, I'm going to zoom in 200% and slow the video down. Next, we're going to look at 1440 resolution, and this is the resolution I would use if I had this camera on a day-to-day -day basis. But Joshua, you say, it's 4.3 resolution. Don't we want widescreen 16.9? Yes, absolutely. I would stretch it in post, whether that's a linear stretch or even a non-linear stretch you could do with some aftermarket programs to essentially emulate GoPro Super View. Look at how much more vertical field of view we've got. We're seeing so much more at the top and bottom of the frame because we're using the entire 4.3 camera sensor. And that is something that no other resolution in the camera can give you. I would trade a little bit of post-processing for the ability to have that wide field of view. GoPro, of course, does it in the camera, but they have a patent on that, and that's why no one else can do it. And now we come to the sexy crowning jewel of this camera specs, the 4K footage. The bit rate on this is 70 megabits per second, which is enough, but you'd like more if you could get it. 100 megabits per second is better for fast motion. Nevertheless, um, since you're only watching in 2.7K, let me zoom in so that you can see more of the details. So here is the uncropped 4K. Um, the field of view is smaller, but you're seeing the actual full resolution of the image, hmm. And here we have zoomed in 200% and slowed it down to 25% so you could start to get even a better look at what kind of details the 4K image captures. Now let's show off the image stabilization of this camera and I'm going to put the DVR in the center of the screen so you can see the difference in sort of the wobbles and bobbles of the stabilized high def footage versus the obviously unstabilized DVR. Um, did you guys just see what I saw? Hold on, reel that back. Let's watch that again. Right as we come around this tree, there is a kind of a weird bobble in the high def that is not there in the DVR. Watch, it's right there. See that left hand move? And then there's a little bit of a right hand move here. Go back and watch the DVR again. That is not just the DVR being a little bit out of sync. It's just not there in the DVR. Yeah, here it is at 10% speed. Watch it, right? I'm watching the DVR. There is no sort of left jerk it's just a smooth right turn in the DVR. There's that left jerk. And then coming up, I saw another one right here. There's a weird bobble. Hang on. It is there. And I don't see that in the DVR at all. So seems like the image stabilization has some work to go. And I think one of the most important characteristics of a camera is its field of view. So let's take a look at the field of view of the run cam and how it changes each of the different resolutions. Uh, because there are a couple of these that are going to steer you away from some of these resolutions. And then we'll compare it to sort of the gold standard, a GoPro Super View. Now let's turn on distortion correction and you can see that it does make the image a little bit less fish-eyed, but it also significantly changes the field, well, reduces the field of view. There's also a resolution they call 1080XV and the XV is probably intended to suggest that it has something to do with GoPro Super View. As best I can tell, what it's doing is it's taking a 1440 resolution and just squishing it down. I didn't really like this squished look and I don't think, I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing as shooting in 1440 and doing a linear stretch. Is it? Let's check that. 
So here is 1440, and whoa, look at that field of view. Look at that vertical field of view. You can see so much more at the top and bottom of the image, can't you? Yay! And if we stretch this linearly, does it end up looking just like the 1080 XV? Yeah, it pretty much does, actually. Don't let the fact that the phone got bigger fool you. The phone is just closer. Look at the whole rest of the image, and it's pretty much exactly the same. So if you intend to shoot in 1440 and do a linear stretch, go ahead and shoot in 1080 XV instead, but know that everything in your image is going to get squished and stretched, whereas if you do a sort of a, a fake super view in, in post, then it's going to look a lot better. For perspective, let's compare this to an actual GoPro. This is a Hero 5 Session. It is in uh, 1080 Super View mode, and it is in flat color profile as well. So you could just see all of the things that the GoPro brings to the table here. First of all, the field of view is even larger than the 1440 resolution on the run cam. It's got, you can see above that second shelf, and you can see closer uh, at the bottom. So it's, it's larger. Um, in addition to that, there's just so much more nuance in the colors that the GoPro is capturing. Um, it just feels like there's more gradations of color here. I'm, I don't know this for a fact, but usually when you see a camera that's doing this, it's because it has a larger sensor and the larger sensor can be more sensitive to finer gradations in the light. Just the picture looks, it just, it just, it just looks better but okay okay now i've said about that the gopro is twice as expensive as the run cam we're not going to harp on the gopro anymore now some good news is that the field of view does not change at all between 2.7k 1080 and 4k resolution and that's a good thing it really shouldn't but like for example some cameras will crop in a little bit on 4k however one thing that will really if you weren't already like going to stay away from the image stabilization because of those weird bobbles that we saw look what it does to the field of view. It really crops in on the field of view to the point where I really didn't like how it looked while I was flying. I would stay away from it because of its change to the field of view. Never mind the fact that it seems not to work that well. At this point, you probably know almost everything you need to know to decide whether this is the camera for you. Let me add a few more things that might help make your mind up. The recording time is about two hours at 1080 or about an hour and a half at 4K. And I did verify this by just letting the camera record until the battery died. Obviously that will get worse as the camera ages and the battery is not. Well, there are some screws here. The battery might be user replaceable if you were ambitious, but this is really not really user serviceable. It does fit into a standard GoPro session sized mount. Uh, and I, flew in this exact mount with no additional reinforcement, just friction fit, crashed the heck out of it, flew probably 15 packs testing various resolutions and stuff, did not ever have it come out. So it legit fits. Like the Runcam 3 before it, it does not have Wi-Fi. It uses a QR code app on your phone. Basically you set the settings how you want on the phone, you hit apply and it shows a QR code and then you input a special button press and you point the camera at the phone and boop, then it takes the settings. This is both a plus and a minus. On the GoPro, you can just look at the screen and see what the settings are in the field. With this camera, if you weren't sure what the settings were, well, you just have to pull your phone out and reset them. Um, but it, there isn't really a way to know what the settings are on the camera. It is nice though. Some people I've seen literally print out a flip book of QR codes for common presets that they use. And then they don't even have to get their phone out. They just pull this flip book out and point the camera at it. And that's kind of cool. However, the lack of Wi-Fi does mean that there's no way to verify the framing of the camera. You just have to point and shoot and guess. And for a lot of people, that's not gonna be a deal breaker. Like if you just stick it on your quad and you go fly, that's not really a deal breaker. But if you're trying to do some handheld stuff or if you're trying to do some stuff where the framing might be important, there's really no way to do that. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the question, should you buy it? And in the past, I've said that at least if you're in the United States, if you are within driving distance of a Best Buy, you, the only camera you should consider buying would be a GoPro. GoPros are more expensive, but with the Best Buy warranty, you can replace them for between $40 and $60, depending on which warranty you get. You basically go in, you give them the broken camera, you claim the warranty, you pay 40 bucks for the, you, you get another camera and you pay 40 bucks for the warranty on your new camera and you walk out again. 
But I don't think that's true anymore, and here's why. You can't buy a GoPro session anymore in a Best Buy. The, the camera you could buy now is a Hero 7 or a Hero 8, and those are not only really expensive cameras, but they are way, way more fragile than this guy. You are going to be replacing a Hero 7 or a Hero 8 more than twice as often as you will replace this camera. And so if you think about it, if this is a $100 camera, if it costs you $40, well, first it costs you $400 to buy your first GoPro at Best Buy, and then it costs you $40 every time you replace it, I'm not sure you're going to come out ahead with the even with the Best Buy warranty. I think that the smaller form factor, just no screen, more durability, I think this camera is going to turn out to save you money in the long run, even though you can't get a Best Buy warranty on it. If you buy something like this from Amazon, you can get like an Asurion warranty and actually maybe even do even better. As far as the image quality goes, I am incredibly impressed with what Runcam has done here. This is the best looking Runcam that Runcam has ever made. And I thought the Runcam 3 looked good, but the Runcam 3 had a really weird, wide dynamic range, hyper saturated. Some people loved it, but people who wanted a more natural looking image didn't like it, and I was one of them. This Runcam is the first Runcam to not look like that weird, over sharpened, hyper saturated ch Chinese action cam. Sorry. This one looks. It holds its own next to a GoPro. I mean, it's at least half as good as a GoPro, and it's a, it's half the price or less. It's 25% of the price of a GoPro 7 or a GoPro 8. So I'm really, really impressed with, Run, with what Runcam has done here. And I think with just a little bit of tweaking, maybe bring the contrast down a little bit more, maybe bring the saturation down a little, you actually could get a reasonably um, good image for color grading even if you want to do something in post. This is 1,000% in my humble opinion, 1,000% a great camera for just the typical person who can afford 100 bucks for an action cam and doesn't want to get into the whole GoPro ecosystem. Obviously, GoPro is better, way, way better in so, so many ways, but many people just can't afford $400 for a GoPro 8 or are they 500 I recently bought some refurbished GoPro 6s for $200. You can occasionally still find Hero 5s in the $200 range for refurbs. But the bottom line is there's nothing out there that has this form factor, this amount of quality, and this price. And I feel like Runcam has a real winner on their hands here. If, if I couldn't get GoPros, this would be a camera I would seriously be thinking about using. But wait, I know what you're thinking. What about the Cadex Orca? Shouldn't we be looking at the Cadex Orca? You're absolutely right. We should. The Cadex Orca has Wi-Fi. But the Cadex Orca, I, this video was originally going to be a shootout between the Cadex Orca and the Runcam Orange. And the Cadex Orca kind of locked up and didn't work. And I had to send it back for their tech to look at and figure out what was wrong with it. By the way, that's another thing that's good about this camera. This camera has been flawless. It just works. You push the button, it turns on. You push the button, it reads the QR code. You push the button, it turns off. That should really go without saying. And yet sometimes you buy a camera and I did buy the Orca because I didn't want to deal with, sometimes I'm just like, fine, I'll just buy it. I don't want to like beg for it. You take it out of the box and you're like, turn on, start recording. Why are you locked up? How do I reset you? That. So I will be reviewing the Orca and I'm going to assume I just got unlucky, but I have to say, the Runcam has been flawless for me. There are links to the Runcam 5 Orange. If you've decided it's the right camera for you, there are links to those down in the video description. And in case you're new here and you haven't heard it yet, they are affiliate links. And that means that when you make any purchase at that affiliated vendor, after you click that link, I get a commission. 
small commission. It's one of the ways I support myself. Um, so if you want to buy this camera, click the link, go buy the camera. If you want to buy something else, click the link, go buy something else. I don't really care. Just as long as you click the link, I get a small commission and it does help me out. I also have a Patreon if you want to join my Patreon for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. And videos like this, I hope you feel like I've earned it. It's a lot of freaking work to put together a video like this, but I really love being able to just put all this information in one place for you to help you decide if this is the right camera for you. My Patreon link in the video description. You get access to my Discord server. You can chat with me during live streams if you decide to join my Patreon. That's going to do it for this video. What do you think of this camera? Is this the one for you? Are you impressed? Are you... Like, there's things about it that weren't good, but the things about it that are good, I feel like more than make it worth the money. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd love to re read your comments. I try to reply to as many as I can. Thanks for watching, everybody. Happy flying. Thank you.